topic, as I had promised from last week's, is the four quadrants. And I know you were probably like, what four quadrants? We've talked about Robert Kiyosaki's quadrants. Why are we going to talk about that again? And, um, you know, I chose that topic or that title of the topic, but that is not the vein that we're going in. And um, I just feel like tonight is going to be so important as we enter into, like, a new set of lessons. And tonight's really probably going to be a little bit more invasive, if you will. Uh, more, it's going to require more <clears throat> thought on your part, and I'm going to require that you actually do some homework for me. So the session itself may not be long, but the... Uh, the requirement or the involvement that I want you to have after this session is going to require some time because I really want you to go deep. I want you to think deeply as we look at the four quadrants. The four quadrants, um, and I actually have a chart here tonight so that you'll know what I'm talking about, and you may want to draw the same thing on your paper tonight or your notes tonight so that you can actually follow along with me. Um, there are so many people, I mean, I get so many emails and little um, Facebook messages and things like that where I see people, their mindset isn't ready. You know, they'll have one thing working, but the other three aren't and what have you. So I really feel like this lesson is so important. And part of my assignment, part of my agenda, part of my goal with you being in the zone is to make sure that you have balance in your life, to make sure that you are truly succeeding. And so I'm really passionate about this tonight. And so let me go ahead and reveal to you what the quadrants are. Number one, relationships. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. But as we go on for the rest of this month and con completing this next series of lessons, we're going to get deeper as we, uh, as we continue to um, go further into the zone. So I, we've, I've covered so much over the last few months. I have taught you, you know, business strategy. I've taught you how to think like a business person you know, taught you how to build web pages and the importance of a blog and, you know, things like that. Very important so that I can show you that you can do those things. And a lot of times people won't share that information. I always say that, but I want to make sure that there's nothing that you don't know or don't have access to. Whatever I have access to, I mean, I want it to be something that you know that, hey, if Pastor Tracy knows it, she's going to tell us. But one of the things that we really have to get, or really just let me say it like this, we have to become masters of the four quadrants, with number one being relationship, number two being your finances, number three being spiritually, and then number four being your health. And so that's where I want to stay because when we look at those areas, typically, you know, some people will have a great relationship and they'll be great spiritually, but their finances are out of whack or their health is out of whack. Or you'll find a person that's very, very health conscious and they're very spiritual, but they have a jacked up relationship and their finances, again, out of whack. And so what, you know, or you'll have a person that's very, you know, savvy with their finances and they're in tune to God, but, you know, they've made all this money, but they don't have anybody to share it with or they're not healthy. But guys, if we're going to have true success and we're in the zone, then what we're wanting to do is to make sure that we have the relationship, we have our finances we have our spiritual lives together, and we have our health together. So I want you to get excited about that because as we go into these other lessons, we're going to get deep in each one of these quadrants to make sure that we have balance, okay? So very, very important. Now, the goal, as I've already said, is to have balance in each quadrant. So what you're going to actually have to do is to be honest tonight and rate yourself. Okay, so we're going to start with relationships. I want you to rate yourself. You know, you can say, well, I'm, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10 in the relationship area. This is where I am. On the scale of 1 to 10, each one of the quadrants, you have to be honest and rate yourself. And a lot of times what we'll have a tendency to do is compare ourselves to others. Well, my relationship is doing good compared to so-and-so. No, I don't want you to do that tonight. I want you to honestly look at your relationships tonight, and we have different areas of relationship we'll look at, but tonight, looking at your relationships, okay, um, honestly, where should they be? Where are they? Can, can it stand room for improvement, okay, so that you can truly have that balance? Now, you know, um, when we're looking at, for an example, the first area, your spouse or your significant other, okay, uh, most of the people in the zone are married, so we'll say your spouse, where are you in that relationship? Are you all communicating? Um, you know, are you friends? Um, or do you have a date night? 
Um, those are the kind of things I want you to, you know, evaluate. Is these things are important because as you are building businesses, guys, a lot of times people get out of balance and they forget about their relationships. Okay, so this is so important. Please don't take this as a light lesson. I want you to take some time, even you know, even as you're taking the notes, because after this class is over. Take some time in your journal, in your notebook, whatever you typically use, and I want you to actually say, okay, all right, where's my relationship right now? Um, you know, is it 50-50? Is it 80-20? Where can it stand improvement? Okay? Second, where are you with your children? Are you spending enough time with your children? Are you, you know, getting a chance to uh, pour into them the way you should? You know, do you feel close to them? All these things, and sometimes it can be painful because it's like, you know, no, um, I don't have a good relationship with my husband right now, or no, I'm not really close with my children right now. But to see, the point of looking at these four quadrants is to look at areas that we can improve, and we can all improve, okay, on as far as our part. What about your parents? You know, of course, yesterday was Mother's Day, and um, those of you that still have a mom, you know, where are you with your mom? Where are you in that relationship with your with your father or, you know, whoever the uh, parent a parental figure is, okay? Evaluate that because I'm telling you, it's such a wonderful thing to have balance in your life. It's good to have the, you know, everything, nothing missing, nothing broken. And I don't like just saying things to say it. I want it in my life. I mean, that's the way it should be. When God says that we're, that we're, that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, you have to understand that that's a part of the abundant life. That's a part of it, saying I have a great relationship with my spouse. I have a great relationship with my children. I have a great relationship with my parents, you know, and, and striving for that, all right? What about your brothers and sisters? You can have great relationship in all three of these areas here, but then it's just like, man, I just can't get along with my sister, or I just can't get along with my brother, or whatever. Look at ways that you can improve that. Um, I actually had a situation where I had to confront one of my sisters, and I really don't like to do that, but my mom isn't here anymore, and I just really felt like my dad wasn't going to say anything to her. So I called her. I was really upset because I'm not close in proximity, and I had other sisters that should have said something to her, but they didn't. So I called her, and I confronted her. You know, and I really wasn't sure how that was going to um, affect our relationship. But because I love her and I felt like sometimes love has to do the tough things, I confronted her about something that she needed to address. She was very upset with me. And I told her, I love you enough for you to be upset with me. I love you enough for you to be mad and angry and whatever else you're feeling right now. But I'm, I'm coming at you straight. And we're, I mean, I feel like we're probably closer than we've been in a long time because she appreciates the fact I'm not going to talk about you behind your back and make all these accusations. I'm just coming straight. And that's a part of me keeping balance in my life. I'm not going to be cringing when the phone rings or cringing, wondering who that is. Oh, that's my sister. Let me talk to her. Okay. I mean, so that's so important. I don't know why I shared that. So maybe somebody needs to deal with something pertaining to a sibling. And then others. Others can be co-workers. Others can be cousins. Others can be your neighbor. You know, um, I have some neighbors that I really probably need to try to reach out to more. I don't know why some of them don't speak. But, you know, as far as relationships, you know, it's important. I'm not a person that visits people and sit over their house and things like that. I'm too busy for that. And I think some people probably are offended because I'm not the baking cookie kind of make a pie kind of girl and bring it to your house but I still love you, you know? And so what I need to do to improve relationships, if I'm evaluating myself, is just show myself a little bit more friendly. I may not bake a pie, but I can, you know, uh, ring a doorbell sometime and just say, hey, I was just thinking about you. Can't stay long, but wanted to say, hey, maybe I can reach out more. So the whole point is this. I, don't, I can't control how they'll, they will respond, but I can, um, I can control how I respond. In other words, my response is my responsibility. Okay, so again, we are evaluating our relationship with our spouse, with our children, with our parents, our parental figures, siblings, and others. And a lot of times, guys, we can miss that piece because you're not getting along with somebody that you work with. Okay, so really start to evaluate those types of things or ask God to move you out of the situation. Now, second part of the quadrant, of course, we're flying through these tonight because we're not going to go deep. You're going to go deep. You're going to do your homework and answer these questions of where are you. Once you decide where you are, then we can have a plan of action of how to get you to where you need to go, okay? So where are you in your finances? Not how it looks to someone else, not how cute you are and how dressed up you are that it looks like you got it going on. Where are you really? 
okay where are you really and sometimes it's like man I don't want to pull back the covers and really look and see where I am how much do I really owe etc so first question are you debt free are you debt free are you debt free ask yourself that question answer it if not what is your plan to become debt free I believe in streams and guys we've talked about that so much throughout these months of you know different ways of making money I've shown you things online and etc as we go deeper in these quadrants we'll talk more about that but you have to decide am I debt free and if not what's my plan are you out of control with your spending Oh my gosh, so for so many women that I talk to, that is just a true fact. It's like out of control. As soon as you get some money, it's gone because you spend it. You're just out of control. Ask that question and please answer it honestly. Do you have an emergency fund? If something were to happen and you can't work or your spouse can't work, you know, something major happened, do you have an emergency fund to sustain you during that time? Okay, very important, an emergency fund. Do you have a retirement plan or a fund? Oh, my God, Pastor, is this so deep? Yes, it is, guys. We want balance. We want to win. We want success in every area of our lives. And sometimes we don't want to look at it. But as far as our race, the brown people, a lot of times we never look at these things. And then we don't have what we could have because we wouldn't ask the questions and we wouldn't answer them honestly. And guess what? Just because you ask the questions and it may not be a positive answer, it doesn't mean you can't change that. The whole point of us asking these questions tonight is to evaluate so that we know where we're going. You'll have a reason for being in the zone. You'll have a reason for saying, you know what, when this extra money comes in, this is what I'm doing with it. Very important. I told my husband the other day, I said, man, I said, the Lord just has been placing some things on my heart as far as different things to sow. And um, I said, what that means is more is coming. And typically that's how God works. When more is coming, he wants to have a reason for that more to come. And so he's given me a couple of um, things that I'm supposed to sow towards to help a couple people in their ministries, etc. because of the income, the, the increase that is coming. So again, I'm asking these questions because I know that I'm setting you up for success. I know that we're making six and seven figure income earners here in the, in the uh, uh, career field that you're, of your choice. I know that. I know that you guys have more information than most people that you associate with on a regular basis. I know that. I know that when I look at people, they, they're in that five that 95% of the moaners and the groaners, the people that are never changed. So I know that when you come in the zone, this is different. It's different. Most people don't talk about this. I've actually run into people that don't have a debt-free plan because they don't care if they're debt-free. As long as they can, you know, go to the store when they want to and, you know, go to the movie when they want to, they don't have a plan beyond their now. But as planners, as winners, as successful entrepreneurs, we have to ask ourselves these questions, okay? So do you have a retirement plan? What, what I'll end up probably going into is, you know, making sure you understand what a Roth IRA is, making sure you know what an IRA is, making sure you understand, you know, what some things that you can have in place as a self-employed person, et cetera. See, you're blessed because, guys, I'm licensed. Um, it's in, 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 you know, in this particular area, I have my Series 6 and 63, so I can actually advise you on mutual funds and fund families, things of that nature. So you're blessed to have a coach that can help you in these areas. I hope you're feeling me tonight. Do you have a six-month savings? I want you, once you, you know, you have evaluate yourself and you've asked these questions, I still don't want you to stop until you say, you know what, I have six months of my salary or whatever in savings that you don't touch, that it's there as your cushion. Very important. That's your storehouse. And God will bless your storehouse and it will give you more, but you have to have a plan. And you can't be haphazard. Rich people plan. Okay? Rich people plan. And they don't just plan for six months. They plan for years in advance. They plan for generations. So a lot of times people may think I'm silly or crazy or whatever when I say what my grandkids are going to say. But see, I'm planning for that. I'm planning generationally, and I'm letting you all in on how I think. You know, even last night my husband and I were having a conversation. I said, what's coming up? You know, how, you know what, what do we need to do for this? My son is graduating next month. You know, we're planning to go to Jamaica this month. You know, all those kinds of things. I lay things out. I am a planner okay it doesn't mean that I may have everything that I'm needing right now but I plan for it I release my faith for it and God grants that because he will bless that person that is planning 
for success. Success does not just happen, it is planned. All right? I'm excited. Ah, oh, do you spend too much? That's the last question I'm going to ask you on this page. Again, and I'll leave it here just for a second because I know you're taking notes. Do you spend too much? When you look back at your checkbook or you look at your credit card statement, because a lot of us use debit card. I use debit card probably more than I use uh, my checkbook. Most of the time, the only time I write a check is when I'm at church for my tithe or an offering or something. But most of the time, if I'm at a store out and about or getting gas, I will use a debit card. I really like that because it gives me a statement, and I can look to see where I've been spending my money. And then I can say, do you spend too much? And I actually fell into that category of spending too much. Every month, I was spending like $5,000 um, because I would get, a statement back from my American Express. You know, and some of those were business expenses, but every month it was over $5,000 because I, I, I love the shop. I like cute things. I love shoes. Okay? And so I had to just really start to say, am I spending too much? And please don't, please don't misunderstand me. When you have it, you can do what you want to, but still, uh, even a person that is wealthy, even a person that has more than enough, they still plan and they still make sure that they're not eating their seed. They eat some, plant some, and save some. Okay? Eat some. Plant some, save some. That's a smart, savvy business person. All right. Then we move to the third quadrant, which is your health. Where are you health-wise? Where are you? We have to evaluate ourselves. When I'm looking, it's like, oh, my gosh, you look so cute. You look so cute in your dress, and that's wonderful. You can look cute in whatever size, but are you healthy? Okay, so a person can, you know, they were doing some uh, statistics and talking about black women, how, you know, I forgot what the percentage is, so many overweight. You know, we'd like the curves and all this being, you know, all cute and everything like that. But guys, we got to make sure that we are healthy. So we can be cute and curvy, but we need to make sure that we are healthy. And just because you're not overweight, it doesn't mean that you're healthy. Okay, I remember, you know, and really, I, I really need to lose about 10 pounds personally, but I remember when I didn't need to lose anything, it didn't mean I was healthy. I still wasn't exercising, you know, doing the things that I needed to do to take care of the temple. And one thing, and, I'm, this, and I didn't put this on the slide, but I'll go ahead and mention it now. If I haven't mentioned it to you before, please, guys, as part of the zone, I really want you to get, oh, my God, what is his name? His last name is Olson, but it's called The Slight Edge. I like the book. Um, it's an audio book, and I keep it in my car um, because, number one, I use my car as a rolling university. Okay, very seldom am I listening to the radio. I'm listening to something that will change my mindset or whatever or keep me in the zone. And so you need to do the same thing. But this book that talks about The Slight Edge, it's not what you're doing over the long haul. It's what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So eating that hamburger today didn't necessarily, quote, unquote, do anything to cancel your life, you think. But it's over the long haul. So we have to be so focused on taking care of ourselves on a daily basis. Is your weight under control? That's the first question. When you get on the scale, are you height challenged? <laughs> are you going out wider than you're going up? All right. Is your weight under control? We have to make sure. I remember two years ago when I had to have um, surgery. Um, I, at that particular time, I was not eating right. Um, I'm not used to um, eating burgers and fries and all those kinds of things every day. And I had taken a new position as a territory manager. And um, this person that I was with, I mean, we would stop at Popeye's and, you know, Burger King. And, I mean, every day it was a fast food place. And, you know, you can put on the pounds, but, you know, I have a pretty high metabolism. So it wasn't necessarily that I was putting on the pounds, but it was affecting my body. And my gallbladder became inflamed. And I remember when I went to talk to the doctor and he said, you know, you fall into that category of being fat, a female, you know, and uh, over 40 or whatever. I forgot what else, the, the, what the fourth one was. But again, you have to watch what you're eating. You have to make sure that your weight is under control. Do you prepare healthy meals for you and your family? You know, are you frying everything? You know, are you uh, a frequent person at, you know, do they know you at the fast food place because here you come again at Mickey D's? Are you taking the time to say, you know what, I'm not going to overcook my food. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I learned some recipes to keep my family healthy. There's so many things that they put in food now, preservatives and, you know, all these things. And I'm like, if it's preserving the food, what is it doing inside of you? We have to be so careful to start reading labels. So as we go through these quadrants, you know, we're going to talk, we're going to go into more detail on how to make sure that we stay healthy so that when God says, with a long life, I satisfy you, we're doing our part.
do you have regular checkups? It always bothers me when someone says, oh, I'm healthy, I'll never go to the doctor. Well, that's not smart. That's like saying, oh, I have my, you know, nice car, and I never change the oil. You know, I never, you know, uh, go for the checkups that the car requires, you know, and I'm terrible with that. I'm so glad my husband um, takes care of those types of things. But guess what? We're, our bodies are the temple. How many of us actually schedule, you, most of you all are not as old as I am, so you don't have to do mammograms and things yet, but I hope you're checking yourselves monthly yourselves, but also just for your, your checkup. You need a yearly, an annual checkup. You need to make sure that you're doing that. Do you exercise regularly? Again, not talking about, oh, I'm skinny or I'm fat or whatever. This is for your heart. This is for that temple. This is to make sure that you're not rich and sick. Okay? That's the bottom line. I don't want you rich and then you're sick. Or I don't want you, you know, rich and, and, and but you're, you, you're, you're on your second and third and fourth and fifth marriage. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand why it's so important for us to cover these quadrants? Okay? So, again, the questions. Is your weight under control? I love this because we are all behind our computer screens or behind a, a phone tonight, so no one can actually see us but ourselves. But when you get off the phone or get off the computer tonight, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I, you know, am I taking good care of my body? Am I being a good steward over my body? Can I do better? I would venture to say that all of us can do better. Okay? What about your mental health? And this is key. Say you're doing the exercise regularly. Say your weight is under control and you are, you know, preparing healthy meals and making sure that you, your children and you have the fruits and vegetables. You schedule your checkup because you've been taught to do that. But what about mentally? Are you taking the time? I always say a brain break. Are you taking some time for you? Are you having Calgon moments? Are you saying, you know what, today is a me day and not feeling guilty about it? I'm talking to you guys tonight because I'm feeling God on this. You've got to take some time for yourself. If you don't pour into yourself, you are empty, and you can't pour into anyone else. It's difficult. Um, I told this one lady the other day, you know, because I just uh, recently came from a um, business trip, but it was also a great day. I stayed an extra day just for me, and um, it's important. I said, you know what? I'm full. My cup is full. And guess what? When a cup is full, if you have a cup of tea, and then the purpose of having the tea, I love tea, it's so prim and so proper. You have the tea, and then you have a saucer, and then any excess tea rolls over into the saucer. The saucer is where you want to serve people from. You, that cup is overflowing to the point that, you know what? I can serve you from my saucer because I'm full. How many of us are running on empty or half full? And then you get an attitude because you're tired, because you haven't had any mental time for you. You've got to take care of yourself mentally. So important, guys, and we'll be talking more about that too. This is a good session. I trust that you're enjoying it. Now, where are you spiritually? I didn't do any more questions on this slide because, again, we'll, you know, I'm a preacher, of course. I'm a pastor, of course, so I can really go in here, and, and I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is say, you know, are you spending time with God regularly? That's going to be key. Because a lot of times, the higher up we get, the more money that we make, the busier that we get, the less time we spend with God. And so guess what? You're going to have to schedule that time. You're going to have to say that this first 15 minutes of the day, the first 30 minutes of the day, the first hour of the day, whatever time you have, that's my time with God. That's my time to sit quietly before him. That's my time to read his word, his instruction to me. That's my time to write out my petition. A lot of times, that's what I'll do. I'll write him a letter because he says, you know, bring your request to him. You know, write it down. But you're spending time with God. I, you know, I've seen it where so many people that have uh, gotten the wealth, you know, they look good. They've got the little six-pack going, you know. They're healthy now, all these things. But God's on the back burner. If we're going to have balance, if we're going to have the good success that God says that we're going to have, he has to be in there. So do you, again, evaluating yourself. When you look and say, man, did I really spend time with God today? Have I been spending time with him? This irritates me because, like, for an example, I'm a worshiper, and so on Sundays, I love to worship God. I'm not rushing it because most of the time the people that want to rush worship, they hadn't worshipped him during the week. They hadn't taken the time to spend time with God during the week. So I'm like, at least on a Sunday. <laughs> you know, do a pause for the cause, okay? So evaluate yourself in all of these areas. I wish I had put the, um, the last quadrant on here again, but I'll just repeat them. Your uh, relationships, we're going to evaluate that. Your finances, carefully evaluate that with the questions that I mentioned. Your health, and then, of course, your spiritual, your spirituality. 
so very important because we are tripartite beings, body, soul, and spirit, and we need to make sure that our spirit is connecting with God. So we're going to end the session by saying spend the rest of the week pondering each of the quadrants and carefully evaluate where you are. This is really going to be life-changing for you. If you do what I'm telling you to do tonight, you're going to be so powerful. You're going to feel so empowered because not only will your life change, but now you'll be equipped to change some other lives. Okay? I want you to purpose in your heart to seek balance like never before. I want you to be honest. It irritates me when I run into a person that says, oh, well, I'm good here. I'm good. No. Truly evaluate where can I improve because the better you are, the more you can serve. And I'm telling you, when you serve, you are more fulfilled than you'll ever be in your life. And I don't care what in what capacity, whether you're serving as a mother, whether you're serving as a CEO, whether you're serving wherever you are, the healthier you are in all of these areas, that becomes a master. And that's the goal. We are going to master the four quadrants. And that's what my goal is for the next few sessions, to hit each one of those areas in more detail, giving you more ideas and, and keeping your mind focused on how can I become a master of the four quadrants. I'm going to open up the chat to see if there are any questions or, or comments. And um, if not, we're going to go ahead and close out the session for tonight.